Hello everyone, semi-retired Bob here. I talk about the carnivore diet, all things related to the carnivore diet, and some miscellaneous odds and ends. Today we're going to cover a couple of topics that I've covered quite a bit, but there are still questions about it out there, so I feel the need to cover it again. And of course, I'm covering it again because we always have new people here as well. Um, the two topics we're going to talk about mostly today is how to get started. And don't be so darned impatient. First, let me say welcome to all the new people. If this is your first time here, I'm glad you're here. You may be wondering to yourself, what in the world am I watching? Well, you're watching me walk. I do try to come up with some marginally interesting things to say while I walk, but the primary purpose of this is for you to watch me walk. And the reason this is semi-important, at least it's important to me, is a little over eight months ago, I couldn't even stand up for more than two to two and a half minutes without severe pain. Now, thanks to the carnivore diet, I'm out here walking every day. So I'm here to show you that it's never too late to change your life. Because I am almost 60 years old now. My 60th birthday will be my one year anniversary on carnivore. So that's still... You know, well, this is the coming up on the end of February, so we got about three and a half months to go till May the 9th. The 10th is actually my birthday, but I started the day before my 59th birthday. So I'm out here walking. For all of you returning, I'm glad you're here. It makes me very happy that there are people that come back to see more than one of these. I hope that I can, in some small way, encourage you on your own personal health journey. Because that's really what this is all about. I share my story in hopes that you can take bits and pieces of it and apply it to your own health journey. I don't expect you to follow all my advice because, you know, after all, I'm just an old, dumb, retired truck driver. What the heck do I know? The only thing I have to offer is what has worked for me. But it sure is nice to see that sun out there again. It literally rained for 27 or 28 hours here. And as you can see, I've got my blue jacket on, so it's certainly not what I would call warm out today. It's just barely above 50. But at least the rain has stopped and the sun is out. That sun feels really good. I'm hoping after I do three or four laps here, I'll get warmed up enough that I can take my jacket off and get some more sun on my arms too for some of that vitamin D. But the sun feels really good on my face and head. But uh, let's just jump right into this thing. Oh. And by the way, you know, if you haven't already, why don't you go ahead and subscribe. My, uh, the information YouTube provides me is that more than half of you that watch these videos are not subscribed to the channel. So why don't you go ahead and subscribe. It really does help the channel out. It's absolutely free. It doesn't cost you a thing to join. Just hit the subscribe button. It does cost to join the channel, but I, that's we're, that's not what we're talking about. Just just subscribe, and if you don't feel like doing that, that's okay. Go ahead and just hit that thumbs up button because that lets YouTube know that people are watching and enjoying what I'm doing here, and it helps YouTube to decide to share my videos out to a wider audience. And if you, you know, have a couple moments, go ahead and leave me a comment down below. Just say hi or whatever it is you feel like saying, as long as it's family friendly. 
that also helps the channel out a lot. But anyway, let's just jump right on into this thing. First, let's start with how to get started. There are several ways to go about this. We're going to talk about, start with here, the slow transition versus the jump right in method. The jump right in method is what I did. I was standard American diet one day and carnivore the next. Um, there's nothing inherently dangerous about this method, but you're in for a bad couple of weeks if you do it this way. Let's just say, you know, I had people asking me about the keto flu, and I didn't actually have any keto flu. I had what Dr. Barry likes to call the carnivore cleanse. And basically for two weeks, while my gut microbiome was adjusting to my new diet intake, let's just say I didn't stray too far from the bathroom because it was immediate and explosive for the first couple of weeks. After that, you, I could control it better and start going back to my normal life. And you know, if, if you have to work every day and just can't afford, you know, you don't have two weeks to just hang out near your bathroom, I suggest a slow, steady transition where you slowly over the course of six to eight weeks lower your carb intake, and up your meat and fat intake. And you'll still probably have a little bit of that carnivore cleanse, but it should only last a day or two when you finally make the, the final switch to total carnivore. So if you time it upright, you can make the switch on a Friday so that by the time things get serious, you'll be at home for the weekend. And you should be able to get back to work on Monday. Not always, you know, if you've got emergency use vacation days or something you may plan on having having to use one of those on a Monday but just be aware that that can happen now the some of the first steps sorry it's a little windy out today but at least it's sunny and it's not raining so I, I apologize if there's some wind noise on this video but that's just what we have to deal with because I get outside and walk because there is a big mall up the road in the first semi-big town, but that's about a 15-mile one-way trip, so 30 miles in my truck. That's a couple gallons of gasoline, at least, provided I don't get stuck in any traffic lights or any traffic, so... It's not very economical to go walk inside a mall. Which would be kind of fun. I may do that one time next time it rains like it did yesterday all day. But yesterday was Sunday. So I was already getting a late start because I had church between Sunday school, first service, second service, and everything else that I do, choir practice and all. I didn't get done with church till about 2.30. And that's a little late in the day to be driving anywhere to go walk. But one of the first things you want to do, this is easier if you either live alone or the people you live with are going to do this with you. And that's clean out your pantry. All the bad stuff you shouldn't have clean it out, throw it away. All the cookies and the crackers and the cake mixes. And 
all the processed food. Just take it and throw it away. Or, you know, if you have a spouse or kids that aren't going to be supportive to start with, you know, let's say there's a kind of cookie that they like that's in the pantry, have them take those cookies to their room. Store them someplace else in the house where you don't go as often so you don't have access to them just by walking to the cupboard and grabbing a cookie or three. But some of the things, you know, I've been doing the lion diet for basically the last four months with a few minor hiccups here and there because I do still occasionally have coffee. And because of the recent price hikes in beef, I have been having some pork and my friend Miss Veronica brought me another dozen farm eggs this morning so I'm going to try those because I've been, I've had a couple of dozen of those pre-packaged hard-boiled eggs that come, you know, already hard-boiled and peeled. I haven't had any negative reactions to those. So I am going to try to add some fresh eggs back into my diet as well. Just to see how it goes. I'm not going to do that tonight. Tonight I got two pounds of T-bone thawing in the trailer. And that's what we're going to have tonight. But you don't have to do just ruminant meat, salt, and water. Don't forget that pork is still carnivore. Chicken is still carnivore. Seafood is still carnivore. You can design your meals around all that stuff. And if you're on a budget like me, you can design those meals around things like Spam and potted meat and hot dogs and bologna. You want to get the all beef hot dogs and bologna get as clean ingredients as clean of ingredients as you can get um, sorry about that I've got this one chipped tooth up over here from oh it doesn't hurt it's been chipped for more than a decade and I should probably get it fixed at some point but it doesn't cause any pain and it doesn't seem to be growing any bigger. But it occasionally holds a little bit of stuff in it, even after I brush my teeth. And then a couple hours later after the digestive process of my mouth works on it, it'll get small enough that it falls out. So that's what you occasionally see me finding when I'm wiping off my tongue like that. That's all that's going on. Maybe someday I'll be able to afford to get it fixed. Well, someday, we'll see. But anyway, you've gotten rid of all the stuff in your kitchen. You've designed your meals. And you know, if you're just getting started, like back when I was getting started, eggs played a really big part of my diet. Because I like eggs. Some weeks they don't agree with me. They haven't really agreed with me for several months now. But I've done okay on the, on the boiled eggs. So I'm hoping maybe I can make an egg scramble. Maybe take one of my smaller pouches of ground beef, cut that in half, and have like a, a beefy egg scramble. Maybe get a little cheese to throw in there. And that's the next thing I want to talk about with getting started. Dairy. Some people do okay with dairy. Some people don't. Now, I'm not talking about liquid dairy. Because there's no reason to 
drink milk. That's a really great advertising campaign they put out. You know, milk, it does body good. Well, milk in any mammal comes from its mother and it's designed to make that, that baby animal grow, get bigger. And last I checked, I wasn't trying to grow and get bigger in the way that milk will make me grow and get bigger. You of course can have butter, and if butter still gives you a little problem, try ghee. Ghee is just clarified butter with all the extra stuff out of it. You can try some full fat cheeses and yogurts. When I use cheese, I use it as a as a condiment because if you uh, if you're a regular watcher of Ready Set Keto, James had to buy a a jug of milk and magnesia because he has a cheese problem, and he apparently ate too much cheese and was having the opposite problem of the carnivore clans. Oh, here comes a jet coming out of the Air Force Base over there. I'm sure you can hear it. But yeah, just... Dairy is one of those things that you can experiment with. I would suggest when you first get started, don't do any dairy except butter or ghee. And then after your inflammation is going down or gone down, you know, you get 30, 60, 90 days into this thing, then you can slowly try to add some of the dairy stuff that you like back into your diet. But the, the whole idea behind carnivore is it's an elimination diet. It eliminates all the things that could be causing whatever problems you have, whether it be a skin issue, a gut issue, arthritis, your weight problems, type 2 diabetes, fatty liver, chronic kidney disease, yada yada. The list just goes on and on and on. And I know a lot of times when myself and others talk about how many different things can be affected positively by the carnivore diet, we kind of sound like snake oil salesmen because you think, gosh, there's no way diet fixes all that stuff. Yeah, well, it does. Yeah, see, there's still water standing. Let me turn this camera a little bit. I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not. But there's a drain right there. And previously, all the rain had soaked in. But now, because it rained so long, the ground is saturated and it won't soak in. What well, didn't run out the... What didn't run out that drain into the little swampy area back there is just kind of sitting in there because there's no place for it to go. The ground is really saturated right here. Where was I? Yeah, dairy. So. If I were going to recommend something to people, I would start with beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. That's not quite as limiting as the, as the lion diet is, but beef, butter, bacon, and eggs are four very uninflammatory foods 
and you can do a lot with that just to get you through your first 30 to 60 to 90 days just to see how it's making you feel and getting you adapted because make no mistake there is a period of adjustment some people call it the keto flu and it's not just your gut microbiome adjusting stuff it's every cell in your body has to adapt to well, I shouldn't say every cell because there's still some that that use sugar as fuel and we'll talk about that in just a minute but most of your cells become what's called fat adapted you know how I don't know if any of you were runners when you were younger but you'd always have to carb up before you run and then you had to keep eating carbs throughout a long distance run or you'd hit that wall where your body just ran out of energy because you burned up all the glucose that was in your system but once you get fat adapted your body can take your fat stores and through gluconeogenesis turn it into glucose for the cells that need the glucose but basically you're running on fat and while I am not a runner by any stretch of the imagination once you're fully fat adapted you don't ever hit that wall where you just can't go any further because your body keeps making the glucose you need out of the fat stores that you have so keep that in mind there is an adjustment period for some people it takes a few weeks some people it takes a few months but eventually once you're fat adapted you may not notice that great big burst of energy that everybody's talking about but like with me I'm not sure I was fully fat adapted at the four month mark when I started these walks now a lot of it was just getting stronger by walking more but I also believe that as I became more and more fat adapted that my body's just working better to produce the energy I need which is why I can keep walking farther and faster and continue to talk to you through most of these unless I'm really pushing it but that's the basics of how to get started If you'd like more information about that, you can leave me a comment down below and I'll get back to you. Or you can send me an email. My email for that type of thing is in the, the About tab. Where it says Business Inquiries Only, just click on that and it'll reveal my, my email address that you can send me an email at. Or you can join my Facebook group. That's absolutely free. There's a lot of smart people in there. Or down below next to the subscribe button, there's a join button. For just a few dollars a month, you can join my channel membership. I just did my first Zoom call about a week ago. I only had one person show up, but at that time I only had four, four members, and now I have six. But that's slowly going to grow, and hopefully it gets to where we have 10 or 15 people in the Zoom calls. So that I can have more than the smartest person in the room show up. Because the one gal that showed up for the Zoom call, 
is way smarter than I am. But now let's briefly talk about don't be so darned impatient. Not so much on my comments, but one of the Facebook groups I monitor, and I'm not going to say which one, but it's more geared towards beginners. And apparently, every beginner in the world forgets the fact that they've been sick for years, if not decades. And I am forever, I mean literally every day you can go into this group and find comments like, I've been doing strict carnivore for six whole days and I don't feel any different. Or I've been doing carnivore, strict carnivore, for three whole days. And the only thing I feel is worse. Or I've been doing strict carnivore for 30 days now and barely notice any difference. Folks, come on. You've been sick for years, or if it was like or if you're like me, you've been sick for decades. You can't expect your problems start going away overnight. Now I know I'm one of the outliers. I got extreme weight loss early and it just kept going. I don't know why, maybe it's good genetics. Maybe it's because I don't cheat at all. Or maybe I just got lucky and hit on the right protein to fat ratio for me coming right out of the gate. Whatever the reason, I know I'm one of the outliers. And now that I'm up to speed and walking fast, not super fast, but I'm starting to get a little warm. So I'm going to turn the corner up here to the trailer take this jacket off in hopes of soaking up some sun for a couple, three laps before I get too cold to keep soaking up the sun. Because the sun is nice and bright. Hang on just a second, folks. With the magic of editing, it'll be like I was never gone. Yeah, what in the world are you people thinking about out there? I know a lot of it comes from Western society is an instant gratification society. Our first instinct when something goes wrong, whether it's knee pain or hip pain or muscle pain or we've got some skin condition or some gut condition or whatever the condition we have, our first thought, because we can go to the doctor and get a pill, sometimes just a pain pill, a strong pain pill that just masks the symptoms. We like the fact that we can take a pill and we feel better. Almost overnight, sometimes just a couple hours, and we feel a lot better. So we have come to expect things Oh, I hope the sun comes back out from behind that cloud because this is going to get really cold really quick if it doesn't. But, uh, you know, we expect things to happen so fast in our modern Western society. But it just doesn't work that way when you're fixing it the correct way. It's like that diet pill that's out there. It's not even a pill, it's an injection. And it wasn't really designed for weight loss. It was originally a diabetes drug that they noticed people were losing weight on and now they're 
marketing it as a weight loss drug. And of course, the use of this drug have gone through the roof and the price has gone through the roof as well. Last I heard it was up to like $1,200 a dose. That's a lot of money. But we expect instant gratification results with close to zero effort on our part. Because that's the way our society trains us. That's the way we were raised. You know, if something breaks around the house, what do I need to buy to fix this thing that's broken? No thought to learning how to fix it yourself. Just, ah, oh, here comes the sun. No thought at all to how do I fix this myself. Just what do I need to spend money on to make this problem go away? And that's where a lot of this impatience comes from. But if you want to fix it yourself, like we're fixing our bodies, ourselves, with diet, and then after that's progressed enough, we're going to add in some exercise. And when I say exercise, I don't mean you do what I do. I say what qualifies as exercise for you. I mean, if you spent the last two or three years sitting on the couch because it just hurt to walk, maybe a trip out to the mailbox and back a couple times a day is exercise for you. Or if you've gone to the point where you have one of those chair lift things on your stairway, maybe exercise for you is climbing the staircase one time a day for now. Or even halfway up and halfway down. Or even just two or three steps. Whatever it is for you, that's what you should do to start. But as I was saying, because we're trying to fix our bodies, loud truck, because we're trying to fix our bodies the right way, plus with all this traffic all of a sudden, my goodness, and there goes the sun again. But, uh, because we're trying to fix our bodies the right way, it takes time, people. This is not a quick, quick fix. This is not a potion or elixir. I wish I had a potion or elixir or easy button to sell you. Because then I think I can make some money. But that's not what this is about. This is about showing you that it's never too late, but it does take time. There is no reason to expect that this problem that you've had for several years or 10 or 20 or in my case 40 years, it's not going to go away overnight. It doesn't take 40 years to correct it. And I know I'm faster than most. I've gotten all this improvement in a little over eight months. But some people, you know, look at Kelly Hogan's story again. You know, she literally gained weight on the carnivore diet for the first six months. But she was starting to notice things healing a little bit. And then at the six month mark, she started melting into a whole new person. Look at her now. And I know I always use Kelly Hogan as the example of that, but there are thousands of those cases out there where people didn't have the results they were looking for right off the bat, but they stuck with it. They kept going. 
And one day they looked up and went, is that me in the mirror? So don't be so impatient, people. And if you have someone that you know of that's just getting started in this lifestyle, why don't you go ahead and share this video with them? Or at least tell them about it. Because it really will happen for most of you. There are the few out there that it doesn't work great for. But I suspect those that see no results, they're either eating too little, they're eating too lean, or they're still having the keto cookies and cakes and snack bars and all that other stuff. Oh, and one of the things I forgot to mention in the getting started section of this video, cooking butter or ghee or lard or tallow or bacon grease or even chicken fat. Use some kind of natural animal base fat to cook in. Take all the vegetable seed oils in your house and throw them away. They are poisonous to your system. Now there's been a lot of you know, talk recently about how maybe omega-6s aren't quite as bad for you as some people say. And there may be some truth to that. I'm not a scientist. I don't know about the omega-3 to omega-6 ratio. I do know what Dr. Barry says about it. And I trust his opinion above all others. But even if it turns out that the omega-6s aren't as bad for you as we think they are by offsetting your omega-3 ratio. Seed oils, vegetable oils are inflammatory, which means they will make all of your inflammation issues worse. And that's the main reason we want to throw them away and not use them. Because if you're trying to get rid of arthritis, what is that? That's an inflammation problem. Irritable bowel syndrome, irritable bowel syndrome, ulcerative colitis, eczema, psoriasis, rosacea. The, the list goes on and on and on. The problem with those things is inflammation. And if you continue to dump vegetable seed oils, into your system, that inflammation is never going to go away. And that's why you're not seeing results. So there's a lot of reasons why you're not seeing results. Which is why I suggest when you get started, start with beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. And then after Oh, here's a good strong gust of wind. I don't even know if you can still hear me. But once you get started and inflammation starts to correct itself, then you can start adding in the other meats. As long as you're adding in the other meats with the correct ratio of fats as well. But again, let's not be so impatient. Let's not think that carnivore diet is some magic pill that's going to suddenly and miraculously make you feel better overnight. There are some that that happens to, but that's not the norm. I'm not even the norm. Being down 130 pounds in a little over eight months. That's, uh, that's not normal. Most people it takes 
a year to a year and a half, maybe even two years to see the progress that I've made. But I've been very single-minded about it. And as soon as I started to notice results, I started pushing harder and faster. But again, I'm not saying do it the way I do it. As Ready Said Keto says quite often, whenever they do a strict carnivore thing, they do feel better. But they don't feel like for them that is sustainable. And, you know, look at them now. They've been doing keto. And they're both, as according, as of last Saturday's weigh-in video, they're both exactly three pounds from the goal that they set for themselves when they got started. So I say bravo to both of them. Emily and James, keep at it. You guys are crushing it. And there's so many success stories out there. But it takes time. Don't be impatient. You didn't get sick overnight. I know I've said that over and over and over in this video, and I'm sorry, but I read some more of those comments last night and this morning, and I won't say I got angry, but I get frustrated with people like that. But anyway, that's enough harping on that for today. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm glad to be out here walking. I'm going to try and do another couple of laps before I take my first break. But for now, since the sun is out, mostly, and I'm feeling pretty good. Oh, quick update on my shoulder. It still hurts, man. It is still getting a little better every day. But I found some Bob and Brad exercises that actually seemed to help it a little bit. So I've been doing those. And this video has gone on long enough that I'm not going to be able to show you any of that stuff at the end of this video. But maybe I'll put together a cooking video and some exercises that I've been doing to strengthen my shoulders. We'll see. Right now, I'm going to get down to some walking. Let's go ahead and cue the music. Okay, cut the music. This is just a short pause in the music. I was walking around that lap thinking, you know, I haven't used the bob cam since I fell off the trail that day. So I'm gonna get the bob cam out and record a couple more laps because I still feel pretty good. I wanna walk some more. So re-cue the music and cue the bob cam.
Well, here I am back again. As you can see, I had to put my windbreaker back on because it looks like there's some more storm clouds rolling in. You know, if I could go back in time, I'd go back in time and go to weatherman school because I don't know of a single other job in the world where you can be wrong 99% of the time and still keep your job. You would think with all the technology they could do a little better. But anyway, there's a brief peak of the sun as that big ugly black cloud moves in front. But just remember folks, don't be so darn impatient. You didn't get sick overnight. You're not going to get healed overnight. You might go to the doctor and get a pill that covers your symptoms overnight. But you're not going to heal overnight. And taking the drug now just leads to taking more drugs later. And that's the endless cycle that they want you to be in, rather than actually fixing your health. But that's all I've got for you today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this little video. Don't forget to get out there. Be 1% better today. Have a great day, everyone. I will see you tomorrow.